Hi everyone and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today on the bench we have a very nice Rolex, a Rolex Datejust and actually it's a, a ladies model so yeah it's very very small. Uh, we see the, the watch um, is in rough shape. What we're gonna do, we're gonna do a service on this, uh, on this watch and uh, for, for once it would be nice to work on a, on a ladies watch and to see a movement from, uh, from a Rolex uh, ladies watch. Um, checking right now if the movement is working correctly. See if the date is jumping at midnight. Coming close, yeah, it looks like it's moving. Perfect. We have a day jump. The movement is running. Gonna open the case back there with the rubber ball. Just screwing the case back. You can see the original Rolex design, stainless steel, obviously, with some gold on this watch. It's a steel and gold model. And look at this tiny, beautiful movement. Checking if there is play there in a rotor. No, it looks good. We can see 2030. And actually, it's strange because the 2030 normally is a caliber without a date. Uh, and this watch obviously has a date, so not sure is there. It should be a 2035 normally. Checking if everything is working. Yeah, it looks good. And you see on the time grapher the result of the watch. Uh, so the watch is gaining 16, 18 seconds per day. The amplitude is really low, so that's uh, the strength, if you want, of the watch. Uh, 217 degrees, so it's missing some strength, so obviously you need a service. And uh, at the end of the service, we should see the amplitude going right back up. Going to start disassemble the watch by removing first the automatic winding system, which is on top of the caliber there. We disassemble that later. And now we should be able to take this very small caliber out of the case by just removing the case clamp there. That's the first one. And yeah, there is a second one. And here is just turn it over and we can release the caliber and the dial with this beautiful gold hand there. I just remove with a pair of uh, lever. And you can see in the description of the video as well some of the tools that I use uh, to do the job. If you have any question, please don't hesitate in the comment uh, to ask a question about tools or anything else. If you want uh, in the comment section, I will be more than happy to, to reply to your to your comments. Just there is no dial fit screw. Actually, the dial is just pressed on top of the of the caliber, which is uh, yeah, which is strange, but uh, I guess it uh, it work. So the dial now is safe. Just gonna remove the date wheel and we can start now to disassemble the rest of the caliber but first we remove the power which is stored in the watch and uh, what i like to do always is to remove the balance wheel and the jewels which are on top of the balance wheel need to be clean obviously we'll put all the parts you will see a bit later in uh, in a cleaning machine as a part of the uh, service we're going to disassemble everything and uh, all the parts are gonna go in a, in a cleaning machine just to remove the dirt and oil. And these jewels there, obviously there is oil inside, so they need to be cleaned very well. So that's why I'm, I'm going to remove it using a bit of Rodico there to grab the jewel. And uh, they will get clean inside the machine. Taking the balance. You can see a Rolex, uh, Rolex sign engraved on the bottom there. And we can carry on disassembling, disassembling the rest of the caliber. We see a lot of similarity by the, with like uh, the main watch um, and the Rolex caliber in general. You can see like for example this spring that was stuck under the crown wheel. You can see it on a lot of other mechanism from Rolex. That's a click. Which is a different compared to other model. Obviously the gold color uh, Ratchet wheel, you can find a lot of Rolex uh, caliber. The click spring here. Just need to be very gentle to make sure it doesn't jump. Perfect. Checking if there is any play there on the barrel arbor, but it looks good. There is no jewel, you see, like uh, there is a, a bush, but no jewel on the, on the plate. And now I'm just going to remove, there we go, this plate on top there. And I can remove now the barrel assembly, which is underneath that we will disassemble a bit later. 
one of the advice I can give to you as well, if you want to start uh, watchmaking as a hobby uh, and start working on your own watches, I will not advise to work on uh, women watches at the beginning because they are so small, like you don't see on a camera, like this caliber compared to a main caliber is half the size. If it's not more, if it's even smaller than that, maybe. Um, and obviously each parts are smaller. They are more difficult to handle, more difficult to put back. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's trickier obviously to work on a, on a smaller uh, caliber than on a bigger one. So that's why even if it's most of the time there are cheaper watches obviously than men watches. Uh, and you can say, oh yeah, it's uh, so nice to work on a cheaper watch, but it's I found more difficult to to work on a on a woman watch, a woman caliber because of the size compared to a men one. So yeah, try to avoid that at the beginning, and after when you get confident, uh, you can move on to like uh, woman watches if you want. But at the beginning, try to avoid them yeah, if you can. So now we just move on the dial side. I'm gonna remove the spring there, which is actually the date jumper spring. And we have a keyless work, which is pretty standard. On top of uh, just remove these two screws, oh, the spring there, just jump and you can see the wheel stay attached to the parts. That's a bit of uh, probably dried up oil or grease there that makes them stick. So all of this will be, will be clean, like I said, in a, in a cleaning machine, that's the purpose of the service. We have the yoke there, yoke spring and the yoke. Yeah, here we go. And the last few parts, the setting lever. Perfect. Now they're out. Just gonna remove the jewel from inside. Oh, it just, just jumped there. It didn't go very far, it's just here. Here go, that's it. Just gonna peg the jewel, just remove any uh, dried up oil or grease there. We make it easier when we clean them place back the balance on the movement because it's a safe place to keep it during cleaning. We gently put it in place and uh, secure it with the screw. And I'm gonna take out the main spring which is inside the barrel assembly there. So just open the lid on the top. There we go. Remove the barrel arbor. Gently like twisting it around just to make sure it release from the spring. There we go. And now I'm just taking the main spring out. Perfect. Now I'm going to focus on the winding mechanism. You have a clip there. I just removed to release the rotor for the, the shaft, which is from the rotor there. That's it. And now removing the screws from this assembly where we can, you see the two reversing wheel. Uh, yeah, I will explain the purpose of this wheel when we put it back together. But we have the two reversing wheel there. It's uh, big red wheels, which are as well uh, very well known on a, on a Rolex uh, calibers. And that's it, all the parts are now disassembled. I'm gonna put them in all, in baskets. And uh, this basket, you will see that we go into my uh, cleaning machine. Again, just to make sure like all the parts are free from grease and uh, oil or dirt. And when we put it back together, we have a movement which is as clean as possible with a, with a wash that will run uh, nicely again. Okay, so the cleaning is done in a few stages. The first one is a cleaning solution. And after we go through two rinsing solution, and the last part will be a, a drying. So we'll dry all the parts and we'll be ready to go back on the movement. I would like to use this opportunity to tell you that I have a Patreon page. You can find the link down in the description. And I would like to thank Matt, Christian, David, Shelby, Jan, Christian, Corne, Alan, David, Ted, Tony, Michael, Stephen, John, Tim, and Gregory. These are my patrons that are supporting the channel. So if you want to join the group, uh, you can go on my Patreon page, support the channel. That will help me a lot to put uh, better content down there and keep me motivated. So thanks in advance if you join my uh, Patreon account. Okay, the parts are now clean, rinsed and dried. So we can uh, take them out of the, of the cleaning machine and uh, we'll be ready to put them back all together.
So first we're gonna rewind the mainspring. Now it's uh, clean. I'm just gonna use this uh, winder from version just to rewind the mainspring. So automatic mainspring on this one, obviously. There we go. We just uh, at the end there we'll have the Y shape, which is uh, very common for automatic winding watch. Just need to push inside there and just finish to wind the last the last bit there. There we go. Gonna remove the lever and the main spring is fully wind there. So before putting it back in a barrel arbor in a barrel, sorry, we're gonna put some grease, some graphite grease on the wall and some uh, 80 uh, 200 on the bottom there. And now I can put the freshly clean mainspring, putting the barrel arbor. There we go. Just gonna put some grease on the top as well, on the lid. I'm gonna put back and close the mainspring barrel assembly. And for this special tool that I use, from our tech there, just gonna place it and just gently press on it and the lid will be closed. Okay, I'm just gonna do an EPLM treatment on some of the parts. This will help to retain the oil in a, in a position. So I'm just gonna leave the parts like a few seconds in the solution, gonna dry them. And uh, I'm gonna apply now the oil on the jewels as the jewels from the balance Assembly. And we're going now putting the chaton back on top. Just gonna do the same thing on the second one. And when it's done, I can place them back on the balance. So that's the top and gonna close the spring. One side and the other one. Perfect. Just gonna do the same thing on the dial side, putting the jewel and closing the mainspring. I'm just checking now if the balance with blowing some hair and yeah, it looks like it's beating and uh, the hairspring is looking nice, so that's good. Okay, so now gonna start assembling the parts on the caliber that now if everything is ready. So we're gonna put this uh, center wheel with this spring you see underneath. I give some tension. There you go, I just put this uh, little bridge on top. Perfect, the screws are in. And I'm gonna start to put the train off wheel if all the wheels are interconnected to each other, that will transmit the power from the mainspring to the balance. So this caliber, like I said, the 2030 or 2035, actually was produced from 1970 to 1983. Uh, so quite a long uh, period, yeah, for a for, for caliber. Um, like 13 years is, uh, is quite long. Uh, obviously, there is a lot of similarity with the previous caliber, which is like the 1500 series. Um, yeah, quite a lot of jewels. And being a Rolex, obviously, like uh, that's a very famous event on the main calibers. You will see a lot of jewels. And um, this is why the Rolex uh, calibers are so solid. Because the jewels, obviously, like they don't wear. It's like this ruby stones that you can see on top of the plate there. Um, they are very hard. It's like uh, almost, uh, it's just below a diamond in terms of uh, hardness. So that's very, very hard. They don't wear and that will keep your, your watch running very well. Um, obviously, it's a lot more expensive to, to, to do because you will have to drill to put the parts. Um, but yeah, this is a, a testament of the quality from the Rolex caliber. And the ladies calibers are following the same, uh, the same path. They will have a lot of jewels being very robust. This one has a 28, uh, 800 bit per, se bit per hour. Um, so it's quite a high rate beating. So that's why you will have the very famous uh, Rolex 
smooth second hand, the beating of the second hand being uh, like uh, like very smooth when you go around the clock. Um, so yeah, they, they are great, great calibers even for for ladies, uh, ladies watches obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, this one was produced for a very long time, and you can find it in a lot of uh, ladies watches. Um, and if if you have this caliber and like most of Rolex caliber, you know that it's a uh, um, a very very good caliber and very solid and very robust. And your watch, if it's properly maintained, uh, obviously you still have to do. It's not because it's a Rolex caliber. You don't have you have to do like uh, your your maintenance and your service once in a while, and uh, it will run very nicely, like for a very very long time, many many generations. Um, so yeah. That's why I wanted to show you as well, uh, uh, ladies, because we work a lot on, on men watches, but you can see there as well, um, a caliber from uh, a ladies watch from Rolex, same as a men, very, very nice calibers, very, very strong. Um, so yeah, just putting the ratchet wheel now. And the click there is a bit tricky to, to put in place. Uh, because the pivot point actually is a screw as I'm going to put a bit later so now I have to hold the click spring underneath just to put it, put it a drop of oil there just to make sure it's nicely lubricated and put in the screw that is doing the pivot point perfect, it's in position I'm going to oil all the pivot point from the train of wheel so we see the oil you remember at the beginning, the amplitude was really low. And the amplitude, like I said, is the strength of the watch, the power which is coming uh, to the balance wheel. Obviously, the friction in your watch uh, makes you lose the power because, uh, because yeah, you will have friction between, between uh, two parts. And that's why we put oil and grease everywhere. Uh, one of the point is to reduce this friction and to make sure the, the watch has the power which is not lost with the friction. And the second point is to make sure as well, like the, the parts, they don't wear um, too much or too quickly between each other. Uh, because if they, if they wear too much, obviously, like the parts can be can break or need to be uh, changed. And on a Rolex Caliber, like I said many times, the parts are expensive. So if you want to avoid like changing parts, that's why you need to do uh, your service at a regular interval. Because yeah, if there is too much wear, sometimes it's irreversible, the parts cannot be uh, cannot be tweaked or cannot be uh, repaired you have to change it and yeah can be costly sometime okay so now I'm assembling the keyless work it's a different wheel we just put back uh, the rest uh, most of the part of the keyless work there with the cannon pinion the millet wheel there and we put back the last part that come on top the setting lever spring with the two screws. There we go. Oh, that's one. Now the second one. Gonna harm the spring there on the setting lever. Just putting a drop of grease again, just to make sure it's smooth. And for the wear, like I said. And yeah, checking if everything is working. That looks good. We have the two position for, for the crown. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna put the uh, pallet fork in position. With the pallet fork cock on top there. Gonna wind the watch. Gonna oil as well the jewel of the pallet fork, which, which is tricky to, to capture on camera. Uh, but obviously you need to put, uh, that's why we treat the parts in Epilan, the pallet fork and uh, escape wheel. Because obviously we, we oil them or more precisely, we grease them because it's a grease we put on there. This is a hack. So this is a, the mechanism that will allow the, the watch to stop, you know, when you go in time setting. It will come and it will contact with the balance wheel and it will stop the balance wheel straight away when you pull on a, on a crown. And now I'm installing the balance and see if the movement wants to start. Just going to pull it in position and drop it very gently there no oh that's it you see just the smallest movement and the balance start to beat that's perfect 
Okay, so now the movement is running. I'm gonna start assembling the complication. So we have the calendar mechanism, which is very simple actually, and it's what just a couple of wheels, a day jumper spring, and that's it. It's uh, nothing, uh, nothing fancy there. Obviously, on other Rolex movements, like especially on men's, you will have like a lot more complex uh, with jewels and everything with uh, that make uh, with a quick uh, jumping dates. Uh, a lot of a lot of uh, more parts if you want, but this is very simple. And we check if the date is jumping when we change the time. Yeah, perfect. I can place back the dial. You remember the dial is just pressed in position on top. There is no dial fit screw, nothing. And uh, just going to make the date jump. Yeah, that means it's midnight. So when it's midnight, the hour hand will be aligned to 12. So now I'm gonna press it in position. Same thing for the hour hand, just a minute and sorry. Gonna press it in position, align with the 12. Just check, yeah, it's just jump. You see four minutes before midnight, that's perfect, that's fine. I like to have it five minutes before, five minutes after at most, but yeah, that's okay. We're just gonna focus on the case now, gonna remove the o-ring and gaskets from the watch are gonna get a change later because obviously you want your watch to be watertight and don't get damaged and for this you need new gasket and o-ring gonna remove the different parts from the bracelet i'm gonna put all these parts in the ultrasonic cleaning machine there to clean them and you can see there when i'm starting look at the fumes coming actually that's a dirt coming out of the watch and uh, ultrasonic will go in all the little uh, spots to remove the to remove the dirt there that's a new gaskets new o-rings i'm gonna put on the watch just gonna replicate them in molycote there put there the first one in the tube of the watch gasket that we go around the brand new gasket that we go around the case back just to seal obviously the back of the watch. There we go. And now that the case is clean, we can put it, uh, we can put the caliber back inside. Gonna put the last uh, gaskets in the crown. There you go, perfect. And uh, gonna put it back on the movement in the case just to align everything there perfect like now it's in place i can secure the caliber with the case clamp put the first one and i'm gonna put the second one in position that's to make sure the caliber doesn't move inside the inside the case perfect and I can assemble the automatic winding system. So that's a reversing wheel. These two wheels will allow actually, doesn't matter which direction the, the oscillating weight will turn. Uh, obviously we'll wind the, the main spring only in one direction and that's the purpose of this wheel, just to make sure it will always wind the main spring in one direction. So if the rotor is turning left to right or right to left, it doesn't matter. Uh, it will wind. It will. It will still wind the rotor. So yeah, it's much more efficient, obviously, than having uh, no reversing wheel and winding only in one direction. Uh, now it's uh, it wind in both direction. If you want, doesn't matter which way. So oscillating weight is uh, is turning. Screwing it in place. Putting like the rotor that I was talking, the big one. So this one doesn't matter in which direction it will turn. Gonna. Secure it in place, remember, with these small uh, clips there. Just push it gently. There we go. Gonna oil the jewel just to make sure again that it runs smoothly. And gonna place the assembly on top of the movement. And secure everything with the screws. So there is three screws on this uh, On this part there there we go checking yeah you see it's turning perfect can close the case back putting the bracelet 
and uh, we should see how the watch is running after, if the result is good after this service, and uh, see if the owner will be happy with the, with the result of this watch. Yeah, it looks very nice, very shiny. Just want to use the opportunity to tell you that I have a, a website where you can find, you can buy some of the watch, uh, find some history about the channel, uh, buy some of the watch that I restored on the channel uh, if you if you if you like them. And as well, I propose to service your watch, so you can go there and contact me uh, if you want me to service your watch. Like for example, this Rolex Datejust, I would be more than happy to work uh, to work on your watch. You can find the link down below in the description. And here is a result on a time grapher for the watch. You see the amplitude went right up around 280. The bit error is almost perfect at 0 0.1. And now the watch is set perfectly. Uh, it's not losing or not gaining any second. It's perfect at zero. So very happy with the result on this, uh, on this service. And look at this beautiful steel and gold ladies J just. Uh, I think it will make this uh, owner proud again. And obviously it will keep good time. So I hope you like this video and uh, I see you next time for my next episode. Bye bye.